Today's video is going to be part informational, part personal story, like a two-headed hydra, where both heads are me, wearing death masks. <laughs> masks and death have a long history together. They go hand in hand, like peanut butter and jelly, like peanut butter and chocolate, like peanut butter and banana. I just like peanut butter. Noble and royal bodies as far back as 8,000 years ago have been found buried wearing ritual masks. These masks may have been placed over the dead person's face by a priest and were connected to the occult and the supernatural and protection in the afterlife. But these, my friends, are funerary masks. We are here to talk about death masks. These are two different things. Have I blown your mind? Death masks, the literal molding of a dead person's face in wax or plaster, came a little bit later. Originally, they had a spiritual element to them as well, but eventually just became a more secular endeavor. By the Renaissance, painters and sculptors strove to create realistic work. If someone famous and important died, artists wanted to work from a direct cast of their face. So at this time, a death mask wasn't a special keepsake for the family. It was an attempt, pre-photography, to get a realistic version of a person locked down before they, you know, rotted. You may remember the story of Marie Tussaud. She's now most famous as Madame Tussaud. The wax touristy museums that bear her name are all over the world. But Marie got her start creating wax death masks from fresh guillotined heads of famous people during the French Revolution, including Marie Antoinette and Robespierre. But the most reproduced death mask of all time wasn't a royal, it wasn't even someone famous, it was an unknown corpse. Lyon Quenu de la Seine, or the unknown of the Seine, was allegedly a woman who died by suicide in the Seine River in Paris in the 19th century. A pathologist at the Paris morgue was said to have made a death mask of her face that was reproduced everywhere, an inspiration to wildly well-known writers and artists. She's even the inspiration for the CPR mannequin. But there is some question as to how true the story really is. If you've ever seen a corpse, especially one that died by drowning, they have a bloated, poor, unfortunate soul look to them. I have a little trouble believing Leon Quinu de la Sienne's perfect little smile and alabaster skin. Corpses don't look like that! But maybe it's true. Alas, we'll probably never know. It was the Victorian era when death masks really took off as keepsakes and mementos for the family after a death. But unfortunately, they seem to have fallen out of favor. But I am 100% behind the death mask revival. Death mask revival. We've had families at my funeral home make them, and recently there was a gorgeous set of photos documenting the process of making a modern death mask. These are used with permission, by the way. In this case, there was also a sympathetic funeral home involved. I've said this before, if your funeral home won't facilitate you spending time alone with the body to mourn and memorialize as you see fit, they are not the right funeral home for you. Speaking of modern death masks, this is where we get into my personal story. It's the story about the time that I had my death mask made and almost died. Well, that's a little clickbaity. I did not almost die, but it felt like I was going to. My friend Pia Interlandi, who is a member of the order, makes burial shrouds and these modern death masks, which she casts in alginate and then creates face sculptures with dirt and root structures, like an eco death mask. When I was in Sydney, I took a day to fly down to Melbourne to hang out and have my death mask made. She put me in a metal baking tin, like a Thanksgiving turkey, and had me lie down with two straws up my nose and tested to make sure I could still breathe with the straws. Pia and her assistant taught me the thumbs up, thumbs down signal. If everything was totally fine, I was very happy with all of this alginate goo poured all over my face. Thumbs up. If something started to go wrong, thumbs down. So I'm lying there and it starts off fine. The gunk is kind of chilly and thick, but it goes over my chin, over my eyes, over my mouth. But then when it goes over my nose, I start to panic. I am drowning in this cold blue goo and the thumbs go down. They're so sweet and so calm. Right away, she says, Caitlin, I see that your thumbs have gone down and we're gonna get you right out. 
But no, I can't hold on. I sit bolt upright and the blue goo comes pouring off of my face and breaches the plastic she has laid out. I'm clawing at my face frantically like a mad woman, but the more that I claw, the more I seem to be trapped in there. I'm like Artex in The NeverEnding Story. Artex! Fighting against the sadness, Artex! Finally, I can breathe, but I'm still there covered in blue gunk and it's covering my eyes so I can't see. So I'm just sitting there marinating in my failure. Pia has made these masks with so many other people. I thought I was gonna be the chillest of them all. Oh yeah, make my death mask while I'm alive. I can face the existential darkness, whatever. No, I, I was not the chillest of them all. I was not the pretty death mask princess. But two positives came out of this. First is that I faced my fear that very afternoon and did the death mask again successfully. I just doubled the number of straws in my nose. Number two, I realized pretty soon after that the reason I had not been able to breathe and freaked out is because I couldn't breathe out of my right nostril at all. And so many months of adventures with the American medical system later, I had surgery to fix my deviated septum. And I really didn't know where all of my breathing problems were coming from. And I wouldn't have known if I hadn't had my death mask made. Isn't death great? What do you think, Deathlings? Are death masks a creepy relic from the past? Or are you ready for the death mask revival? Keep in mind, you can also cast hands. This video was made with generous donations from death enthusiasts just like you. Don't take away my legacy, you strumpet!